everybody. Thank you. So great to be here. I'm Will Larsh. Um, I am the Flutter Engineering Lead in the Materials Design Department here at Google. It's really quite an honor to be here. Really excited. I was supposed to um, do a recap of what we were talking about at Mobile World Congress, but I don't know if you heard that our plans changed. So I got some other stuff for you that hopefully you'll find just as uh, exciting. Um, this is what we'll go through today. I'm going to talk a little bit about Flutter Interact and um, some new stuff around design execution. I'm going to give you a little preview at Google Fonts for Flutter 1.0. And then a couple new packages that uh, we just released. One being Basics for Dart, the other being Animations for Flutter. But first, big thank you to Vince so much. We really, really appreciate you doing all the hard work it takes to put this together. Vince, everybody. <laughs> Absolutely amazing volunteer. Wonderful. Um, uh, so, Flutter Interact. Did anybody get a chance to watch anything from Flutter Interact? Yeah, OK, great. Yeah. Um, if you didn't hear, Flutter Interact was our one day event that we had this year. It was kind of like a IO for Flutter or Chrome Dev Summit, all about Flutter. This year we decided to focus on how Flutter can make beautiful apps come true and what we're putting into Flutter to invest in the future of gorgeous app uh, development. <coughs> um, so here's, here's uh, some of the highlights of things that we went through that, um, that you might have missed. Um, right after the event, uh, we got put on this amazing list, the 14 most important design ideas of the decade. Now, um, what's kind of amazing about this is the company that we're in with this list is the iPad, the Tesla Model S, and social media. So it's kind of a crazy honor to be on this list, and I honestly wouldn't believe that it meant anything if it weren't for the fact that the guy that chose to put us on this list is John Maida. And John Maida is a huge god in design. He works at, um, Publis it's French, Publici, Sapion, uh, in Paris. Uh, and um, for him to know about us, much less believe that we are important, um, was very humbling and actually an incredible, um, incredibly good sign that what we're trying to prove to people about what you can build with Flutter is resonating and resonating even with designers. So people who don't actually even do the engineering are understanding the value that we bring to them as Flutter engineers because we can execute what they're built, what they are um, designing for us. Um, I th we think a lot about the designer-developer relationship and the designer-developer handoff. This is kind of how things are right now. The designer designs something, and then they give it to the developer who builds it. And it takes longer for the developer to build it than it does for the designer to design it. Um, that, uh, nobody seems to understand why, except for the engineers, and we say, because real things take forever. Um, and unfortunately, it can lead to us getting pretty out of sync. And um, I wish it looked this nice in real life, instead it's, you know, lines all the way through here, and then, hey, I need this, oh, I've already finished that, or, oh, this came out, but we need some more help on it, and I'm already thinking about next year, and all sorts of stuff like that, and then everyone's mad at you. Um, so we were thinking, what opportunity does Flutter have to improve this relationship and to fix the cadence of development with designers? And we realized that what we really want is for development to be as fast as design. That that is our ultimate goal with Flutter, is if we can make it so that um, the time that it takes to build something and design something are equal, then we'll have a much better chance of staying in sync as we're developing a product and iterating on it moving forward. Obviously, we're not quite there yet, but this is the sort of thing that we're looking forward to when it comes to Flutter. As you can see, this isn't about like, hiring fewer engineers or something like that. It's about getting more done and with less compromise. Because I've mentioned this before, but we often have to say to designers, I'm so sorry I didn't have enough time to build blank detail. Or, well, we think we'll get to that, but it's a P3 or P4, so maybe we won't. With Flutter, we would love to be able to say, yes, we finished it, what's next? That would be an amazing world. And also, with some of the new tools that are coming out and the relationships we're building with Flutter, we're starting to like even blur 
the handoff process between designers and developers. Not necessarily blur the lines as to who does what, but um, trying to see how each person can be more useful to the other in that process. And these tools that I'm talking about are some amazing Flutter exporting plugins. So one is uh, for Adobe XD, uh, which should be coming out soon. I don't know exactly when, but um, uh, that we previewed it at Flutter Interact, and you can see some footage of it working there. And the other is for Supernova. Now, these tools are the kind where a designer designs something in their thing, and then can export code that is Flutter code that you can then run and put inside your app. Now, at this point, there's still a lot of compromises that need to be made. Most of the time, when things are built, they're not exactly how we would build them with widgets. But it still saves some time in the process by answering that question for you of, what was that color? What was that line width? Uh, what were those corner radii? And um, exactly how far apart is this? What's the padding there? You know it because you have the code for that that you can then take and mold and do um, other things with. Now, You've seen tools like these for other technologies before, and oftentimes the compromise that you have to make with them is that if you put a, a designer puts a radio button, it exports it as two circles, <laughs> which is not exactly what we want for a radio button. What's really cool for with Supernova uh, is that you can actually uh, go into it, inspect it, and say what kind of component you're looking for inside it. And if I'm not mistaken, you'll be able to get more useful code that's more aware of the kinds of widget structures that you're looking for. So we're getting even better at this, and Flutter is now important enough that companies like this are willing to invest their time in creating tools to support it, which is really wonderful. All right, next thing that we mentioned at Interact is Google Fonts for Flutter. Google Fonts, if you don't know Google Fonts, is one of Google's earliest investments into the front end for the, uh, for the public. It has, um, I think, about a thousand fonts that are all open source and are free for you to use and have a license that you can use in almost any way in which you need to. They are very popular on the web. They get served constantly to almost every website that you're looking at. We actually did some math and found out that we've served 34 trillion of them, which seems like a lot to me. Um, and so we thought, what can we do to bring this, oh, I'm going to go back one. What can we do to bring this experience to Flutter? Because who here has tried using a custom font in a Flutter project? Uh, I don't know about you, but I found it a very frustrating uh, experience <coughs> because you have to drag a file in and you have to type out the path. Sounds so simple, but do you put the slash at the beginning? Does it have to be in the fonts folder? If there is a fonts folder, what is it off the root of? Is it in the assets thing? Does it have to be there too? Why isn't it finding it? That's the question that I was saying to myself as I was building an app. Well, this is so hard. I work on the Flutter team and I can't get a font into my app. It's very embarrassing. Um, and I'm supposed to know this stuff. Why can't, I bet somebody else is having a similar problem. Um, and of course, like once you've got one in, then usually it's easier to get the others. But that first one shouldn't be so painful. Um, so instead, we made a plugin that now gives you autocomplete for all the fonts that are on Google Fonts and lets you just get them in your app. So it actually goes and it downloads them from Google Fonts for you and inserts it into your program. So you don't have to deal with that file. You don't have to deal with the path. The biggest mistake you can make is putting in Lobster instead of Lobster 2. And I don't think that's so bad. They're very similar. Um, yeah. See, it's going to change again. <gasps> Beautiful. Um, and there's a lot more to this than just improving the developer experience. There is a game that you can have if you have an internationalized app for the uh, for the consumer as well. Right now, I don't know if anyone has worked on apps that ship um, with Chinese language support, but the Chinese glyph um, set is very, very large. There are a lot of characters in Chinese, and fonts that support them often end up being very, very big. And so that's why a lot of apps only that support Chinese will only ship one font for Chinese, because when you add in more, these are real numbers, it can instantly make your app 30 megabytes heavier. And I'll tell you something that we've learned here from research. The higher the number of the size of your app, the heavier your app, the fewer people download it. That goes for Android and iOS, for anything. The larger your app, the fewer people download it. So you want to get that number as small as possible. And this is one of the ways that you can do it. Since that font is downloaded at runtime, 
you can ship the smaller version of your app to everybody, and then if somebody needs to access it in Chinese, they can at runtime download those three extra fonts that they need. So it's not about like um, giving the impression that it's smaller than it is, but making sure that people get exactly what they need and no more. So that people who only need Latin fonts only get the Latin fonts, and then other people can get the other ones if they need it. Now, um, I think it's pretty amazing that now we've got this dynamic font thing that can just show up. Um, it's available right now on pub.dev if you haven't used it. It really is as simple as just plopping this into your pub spec and then you go. Um, and, but here's a couple of the things that we've got coming up for the 1.0 release, which should be coming out um, this month. We're improving the autocomplete experience. I thought that was pretty good, but we found some ways to make it better. Uh, we're also integrating it with theming a little bit more. And by the way, uh, another thing that we're working on is uh, improving the theming experience, period. We've gotten some really great feedback about what people want in the theming developer experience, how we can make it simpler. Um, and we're doing a lot of changes right now uh, on planning a better theming experience. And then we're also giving you the option to have pre-bundling of your fonts, which means build time download. So if you want to just include the font with you and all you're using Google Fonts for is the improved developer experience, then you can have that too. You don't have to have downloaded uh, fonts. Maybe some people here have an app that's particularly designed to work offline and you think the first time somebody opens it, it will be offline, then you can include that font ahead of time. So these three things, Google Fonts, Flutter, and Material Design, which is the uh, design guidelines that Google has that my team works on, we are trying to really let developers know that we are part of a suite of first-class front-end offerings that Google has, of teams that work together, that cross-pollinate, and invest their time together in order to create the tools that you need. Um, and um, that's, these are both things from Flutter Interact. I highly suggest you go and watch the, um, the two keynotes from it if you haven't, or probably read an article on what was in them. So here's a couple of new things, a couple of things that weren't at Flutter Interact. Just a little nuggets. One is the Dart Basics package. This is uh, some helper functions that we found we needed, and so we open sourced with everybody here. Um, it's available already on pub.dev. You can go get it. Um, looks like we're still saying it's in beta now. Uh, it's some things like this. So we've got extension methods. Everybody know extension methods came to Dart? You're welcome. I asked for that feature. Um, <laughs> I was using it when I first came and I was like, we don't have extension methods? That's embarrassing. But now we do. Um, so we added some things to int, iterable, list, map, object, set, string. Here's an example. Uh, in int basics, we've got um, you know, type safe duration objects. They read like real numbers. Uh, there are common operations on lists, like, like sum and uh, min and max. Um, it's easy to read is null on all objects. And you can slice methods on lists and strings that are common in other languages. What does slice do? I don't even know. I haven't used it. It doesn't come from what I come from. Who can tell me what slice does? Is it going to be a surprise to everyone? You know. I guess it will split up the string only for the first three characters, right? Yeah, I guess I that was pretty it. obvious from the context that I didn't <laughs> even try. Great job, Ben. Thank you. No, that's great. Yeah, slice up that string. Um, anyway, so you can go use your Dart extension methods in the Dart Basics uh, package right now. The other thing is this cool new package uh, for animations. Uh, it's just called animations, and I asked them because the first things that are in it are from the new material motion system on, about transitions. I was like, should we call this material motion or material transitions? And they said, we're just getting started on animations, so I can't wait to see what else they put into this, the team that's working on this one. But these are some, as you can see, high-quality pre-built animations for Flutter. Um, and I'm just going to show you real quick. Do I have time, Vince? Great, you're not here. Um, uh, Always have time. <laughs> how, how, how easy it is to get it in to an app. Is that there? Mm -hmm. All right. OK. Now I've got like super simple app. This is uh, almost exactly like the starter app you get, except I've, I've changed a couple things in order to um, help the demonstration look a little bit better. All I'm gonna do is go over here to my pub spec. Uh, and that's the wrong one, this is the right one. I'm gonna go over to the pub spec, add the animations package. 
Save it. Hit packages get. Come back over here and import it. I always feel like I'm on a cooking show when I do this. Uh, okay. And then I'm going to in, have the floating action button grow into the next screen. There's this really, really great helper transition that can take anything and grow it into the next thing that you want with a little bit of code. I'm going to wrap this widget with open container. I'm going to get rid of the floating action button because it will be the thing instead. It will be a closed builder. And it's going to return a sized box that will look just like a fab. Great, perfect. See, just what I wanted. Um, okay, so that's what it's going to look like when it's closed, when it's in the state that um, that we before we've begun. Now, with the open builder, we do a similar thing where we're just going to tell it where we're going to. And I just have this widget for the next page. Now what I need to do is tell it the shape that I want it to be when it's closed, which the reason why I had it here is because I had this helper code to tell me. <coughs> and then since I brought in a new package, I'm going to restart the app. OK. And there you go. And then to go back, you just hit the back button. You pop off the navigator. So I don't know if you can tell with the frame rate that's going through here, but it's growing and transforming into the other thing and back. Now, if you don't know how amazing that is to be able to do it in just these few lines, it is. Animations in Flutter are hard. It will require um, have a bit of a learning curve. One of the things that we're doing is trying to make it easier to get started and to get some of the most common things down. And the things that are all inside this um, are found in this new amazing guidance on material.io, which is the website for the material components, for the motion system. And you can go here and see all sorts of new transitions that we have. Um, for doing all sorts of cool things that are very common in apps, should be simple, have been traditionally hard, and now you can do in just a few lines with the animations package. So I highly encourage everyone to go look these up and see what kind of great stuff they've done for you. All right. So, back to this. Um, if you want to learn more about the animations package, there's a really great article on medium.com by our friend at the New York City Flutter Meetup, uh, Martin Rybeck, a deep dive into the Flutter animations package. Um, anyway, so what I talked through tonight, and I had like no time, Flutter Interact and some stuff about design, uh, showing you Google Fonts for Flutter if you hadn't seen it before, and a couple new packages that we just released, um, like just released within the past uh, two weeks, basics and animations. So does anyone have any questions? Now that we have some time for questions about anything. Doesn't have to be about these. <laughs> yeah. Yes, ben. When is the new 2018 material design going to be released? Because now on the beta channel, I uh, see I've seen some deprecation warnings. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so um, we have been working closely with the Flutter team on their um, on migrating from the uh, 2014 material mm -hmm. design to the 2018 material design. One of the reasons why we're uh, just a little bit late in completing that, I'd say we're we were already at 80 percent, but then there was this like last 20 percent that we had to hit was. Um, Flutter had a very strict no-breaking changes policy that was part of uh, 
this like safety box that they put themselves in for their 1.0 launch, but we've gotten past 1.0 and matured, and so they were like, great, now we'll have an actual deprecation policy, an actual breaking changes policy that allows you to make them, and we have. And um, Hans Muller, um, my partner over on that team, has gone ahead and put in all the 2018 text theme styles or typographies, I forget which, which class they're called, um, so you get your headline one through six instead of your display four through one, and your body one and your body two are switched. You're welcome. Um, uh, the designers chose it, not me. But um, so that should be coming as soon as there's a next stable release. When there's going to be a next stable release, I'm not sure. Oftentimes they happen around our um, big milestone events of the year, and I believe I/O is supposed to happen. Supposed to happen in May. Um, Although, I don't know anything about it, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of delay or change in the, um, what was going on because of you know, health concerns going on in the world. Not that I know for anything. Just starting rumors. Spread them. Uh, uh, but, and I also don't know if that's it precisely when they mean to do the next stable release, but um, my guess is that's the most likely time. So if that works out, that's only two more months. And if not, four months. <laughs> Yes? Will the changes to the theming also be in this release? Changes to theming will kind of come out a little bit by little. The first thing was that we're catching up to some of the old things, and we're beginning to deprecate some of the, I forget if he's already done it yet or if that's going to come in the release afterwards, but there's 75 fields in the theme data class, and half of them are irrelevant now. And so the first thing is, after the text theming stuff goes through, is um, deprecating the ones in there that don't need to be there anymore. So not just yet, but coming. Yes, Vince. And are those removed because the design guideline changes or because it's like duplicates or what's the Some of them interfere with other ones. And that is a poor developer experience. Like uh, I bet most of you who have done the Flutter app had a primary swatch in your theme data because that's in the 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 Flutter create thing, like the one with the the fab that many times thing, it's really gets in your way and does weird stuff under the hood because it was part of an earlier version of theming that actually predated material theming. The Flutter team taught us a lot about theming because they released it first and then we said, great, can we make it this way for material design in 2018? And they're like, well, as much as we can, but we'll catch up later. So that's where we are now is making sure that the catch up happens. Um, so the ones that are being deprecated are ones from uh, before we had a proper spec for material theming, and unfortunately, the, one of the bigger problems with it is that they can like conflict with the other ones. Um, but all the newer ones that have come out in the past two years, those are great, and they'll stick around. That's all about a lot about like making a widget theme data of some kind, you know, slider theme or slider theme data, um, that sort of stuff. Those those are sticking around. Did you have a question? No. Great. Anything else? Anyone else? Vince, you look like you're about to ask a question. <laughs> um, if someone asks a question, um, go ahead, because um, I know I had a good question, but I Forget it. <laughs> no. You can ask it to me later, that's fine. Anyway, so stick around for after the break. Um, Jose, who works on my team, is going to do a talk about some... Oh, you had a question. Um, do you know a date for the um, XD or Supernova exceptions? Uh, no, I don't know the release dates for those. I'm not sure if Supernova has any comms on their site, but... Um, uh, Adobe's working very hard on theirs, and I saw a recent version of it, so um, I don't think you'll have to wait very long. Okay, or does anyone or you have tried it out because I tried some earlier version and it wasn't really helping? <laughs> I'm not sure about the... I haven't done, I have only done a, a cursory use of it. I haven't like actually used it as part of like a workflow because I'm not a designer. And I think that's the right person that should check it out. So um, no, but we would really love the feedback after it is released from anybody on whether it was useful for them and what sorts of things need to change or anything like that. Yes, Vince? Yeah, um, in the open container, when you create the open state, is it like a new route, so you would need to pop it, or if that, you want to go back from programmatically, for example? I believe so. 
I didn't make this one, but I do believe that, it, that it's a new route and you pop it off the stack. That's why I didn't have to hook anything up and the back button just worked. Again, trying to make the, the there are a lot more fields in Open Container than I showed, and there's a, a really good sample app that uses all of them. It's gorgeous. It, um, oh, you know, I have that um, preloaded in here. Uh, so, it, so I showed it from a fab, but it's also got, you know, when you're inside a collection of some kind and these things happen. I mean, how many times have we wanted to do something like that, but it's just not easy in almost any language. Go from there. And by the way, there's a lot of research that shows that when you can make that contextual link between what someone clicked on and where they're going to show that they are an expansion of the same thing, it actually is a good user experience, too. Um, that's one kind. This is another. So this is one where they kind of come in from the, from the left or the right. Um, that one's clicking buttons. <laughs> oh, show modal on this one. This one is that um, the transition of the modal coming in, the fab going out. They don't look like much, but these are fades with also a transform inside them. How about, ooh, I should have done it on the next screen. I don't even, that wasn't even one of the things. <laughs> How about this? Uh, big fish, yeah. There you go, yeah. And again, since it's just a navigator route, just pop it off the stack. <laughs> yes, great job team that worked on it.